All right, gang, here we go. We're now into chapter one. We've gotten through the basics of pitch and rhythm from chapter zero. Now here in chapter one, we're gonna start talking about scales, how we build scales, both major and minor scales, and also how scales can be used to move from one key to another. All right, now let's go through the content here and let's get off and running. A scale is a collection of pitches that helps us to define a key or a tonality. Each scale will consist of one of each of the seven letter names of the alphabet that we use in music to identify pitches, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Those letters may be sharp, flat, or natural, but there will only be one of each letter in the scales that we'll use in this class. To start off, let's start simple with the main key in the center of the piano keyboard, C. And if we just use one of each letter name starting from that C, and we go up until we hit C again, we get our first scale. If we look at the spaces in the scale between the notes, the intervals, we get a pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. In your book, it refers to whole tones and semitones, but these are just different words to describe the same thing. Another way to look at the scale is to identify the notes in the scale by the steps that they're occurring. So the first step of the scale, C, is a one. The second note or step of the scale is D, and so on. And you can see that when we hit number eight, we're back to C again. So in this case, eight and one can be considered the same step of the scale. Along with the letter names, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we also refer to each step of the scale with specific names that will come to have reference to their harmonic functions as we go through learning keys and how chords move from one to the next. The first step of the scale is called the tonic. This one's the most important. The second step of the scale is called the supertonic because it is above the tonic. The third step of the scale is the mediant. The fourth step is the subdominant. This one's going to be important. The fifth step of the scale is the dominant. This is the most important aside from tonic. The sixth step is submediant. And the seventh step of the scale is called the leading tone. This excerpt from the bottom of page 17 in your textbook talks about transposition. Transposition is when you take one piece of music and you start on a different note, but you follow the same pattern of intervals so that the music still sounds the same while higher or lower in pitch. Take the example on the left. We see that we're starting on a B flat and the intervals are the same pattern of whole steps and half steps from the C major scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And the notes that result by simply moving those intervals starting on B flat gives us the notes of the B flat major scale. In this way, we can have 12 major scales that all follow the same pattern and thus they all have the same tone and color of sound to them. The next kind of scale we're going to talk about is the minor scale. The minor scale starts much like the major scale where we have one of each letter name, but the pattern of half steps and whole steps is a little bit different. To convert a major scale to a minor scale, you take the third or the median, the sixth or submedian, and seventh or leading tone and lower each of those steps of the scale by a half a step. And now you can see here the C natural minor scale. There's also a special case to point out here when the seventh step of the scale is greater than a half a step from the tonic, we don't refer to it as a leading tone anymore, but now it's called a subtonic or below the tonic. We now have a new pattern of whole steps and half steps. It is now whole half, whole whole half, whole, whole. The challenge composers found with the natural minor scale is that it didn't lead to a strong sense of resolution to the end. Listen to this chord progression.
The last two chords don't have a strong sense of pull as if it sounded like this. And so composers made an edit to the scale. In order to improve the harmony, composers started to raise the seventh step of the scale from the subtonic B flat to the leading tone B natural, and they started calling that the harmonic minor scale, and this is what it sounds like. And now we have a new interval pattern also. The harmonic minor scale is whole half, whole whole half, augmented second, half step. While this new scale was much more gratifying for the harmony, the large leap at the end of the scale was very challenging for singers. We call this interval an augmented second. That big jump, A flat to B, was hard for singers to sing, so they made another edit and they raised the A flat to an A natural. And they created the melodic minor scale. And you can see for melodic minor, our pattern of whole steps and half steps is whole, half, whole, 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 half. The challenge with melodic minor is that when you start coming down the scale, you can't tell if you're playing a major scale or a minor scale. That's the same group of four notes, C, B natural, A natural, G. So on the way down for melodic minor, you revert back to natural minor. So the melodic minor scale has a different pattern ascending and descending. So this covers all the material that you need to know about the four main kinds of scales. The major scale, the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, and the melodic minor scale. Be sure you know the four types of scales and what the pattern of half steps and whole steps are for each one, and also know the names of the scale degrees, tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, subtonic, leading tone, and then we're back to the tonic. Be sure you review the material in your textbook, check out the resources on the textbook's website, and make sure you review the content in the video so you're ready for class.